Welcome, guys, to another episode of Doing's Corner. On today's episode, we're going to be discussing the street girl lifestyle. There's a lot of conversations these days about, you know, hookup, runs, and, you know, the general street girl lifestyle. And, you know, people pass a lot of judgments to this. And, you know, oh, say, why are they doing this? Call them all sort of names. But I personally feel like people get into this lifestyle for different reasons. And, you know, I don't pass any judgment towards it because of this, because you just never know what people are going through. But today we have a very brave young lady is going to be talking to us about what it's like living this lifestyle, the challenges they face, and why they even get into this in the first place. So thank you very much for coming. Welcome, Dwayne. Thank you. <laughs> All right, please tell us your name and, yeah, your age and, yeah, anything to introduce yourself. Yeah, good evening, viewers. My name is Bisola. I'm from Edo State, and I'm 35 years old. Okay, Bisa, thank you for joining us. You're welcome. Um, please feel comfortable. Any, if, you, if you want to speak pidgin, if you want to speak English, whatever, any language that you're comfortable speaking. Okay, so can you confirm to us that you're into this hookup street girl lifestyle? Yes, I'm into it. Okay, can you tell us why, first of all? Like, why did you get into this? Thank you. I got into it due to some circumstances, family issues, because I'm the first of five children. Mm. So I have four siblings that I'm supposed to take good care of. My mom, my dad, you know, the average Nigerians that can just put food on the table and maybe clothes, any other thing. You should take care of that on your own. So that's what led me to it, because I have a lot on me. Okay, but I mean, I understand that, but like some people might say, oh, why hook up? Why not What's get a job? job? Why thank not? You. Yeah, because there's so many jobs you can thank do to you. still provide for your loved ones. Yeah, thank you. So why you. this? Actually, I went to an aviation school after my secondary school, which when I was supposed to do my IT, mm -hmm. I had to go to an agency, then at race course, mm -hmm. to go for my IT, and maybe they can retain me after the IT. So surprisingly, the, the, the man in charge of the, he's not the owner of the company, he's, he's just in charge of it. He was telling me that if he can't sleep with me, I can't even do the IT there. Talk less of them retaining me. I went several places, and then it was not easy to get a job. Just like now, maybe you can search for a job online and the rest of it. It was not easy. And I have a friend then, when, we were going, when I was going for that course, that aviation course, she's an evil girl. So I got to meet her back, like, ah, I'm finding, I'm finding it hard to do my IT, no work, nothing, nothing. So just like, ah, you see the fire as you go take to IT. Ah, lock up, if you survive on your own, that that's what all most people are doing. When You're you, talking about hook up, right? You know, I'm talking about, like, you said, is there no other jobs right. that yeah, I can do? Yeah, but you said do? that she was saying this is what most people yeah, are doing. That what that up, yeah, that hook up. Yeah, that hook up. She was referring to hook up. Like, if I'm, if I'm into hook up already, that would be finding hard for him to just sleep with me and have the work. Mm. I was like, ah, that kind of man. I, mean, I don't even like that kind of a person. I can't do something with such person that I would have preferred that hook up. That mm. since there are a series of men that you just, you go for what you want, that I would have preferred that. That was how I just got involved in it. How long have you been into this lifestyle? It's quite a long time. Long time. Yes. It's about um, five, six years now. We need to go on a quick break. We have some adjustments to make, but we'll be back shortly. We're still on the topic of the reality of a Ron's girl. So we're still sitting with Bisola, and she was telling us that she's been into this lifestyle for six years now. So Bisola, tell me this. So you say you've been into this lifestyle for six years now. So 
how do you operate? Because I understand that there are different types of hookup. There are people that just yes. have like customers that they just call. And there are people that have to stand on the road, road and yes. all of that. So tell me what, how do you <clears throat> operate? Thank you. Like we, we go to clubs. We get to meet a guy or a client. But all we do is but we try and make friends for the first time. Mm. So, because we don't love going to clubs or hanging out on the road, because we are born and brought up in Lagos, and we don't want anybody of our relatives to see us on the road, so we are inside the club. When we make friends with them, they can always call you another time. Okay, so it's not the hanging, typical standing on no, the road. No, 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 no. Okay. Go to clubs, different. So, different do you types. not worry about like STDs, diseases that can be gotten from this lifestyle, or yes. do you just feel like you know you are under God's protection and that could never? Oh happen no, to you? we're worried. We, pro we protect ourselves too. We play safe. What play if you safe. What if you meet a client that says, um, "I don't want to use a condom." You know, I want do things like yeah, that happen. Yeah, it happens at times. They're like, ah. Hello, babe, I don't want to use condom. I'll add to the money. Or I'll make you fine if you... But it's, it's at your own risk if you want it. If the person wants it. Right. But me, I can't because... Even, you know, you know there's, no, there's no how you are on the street. You will still have a close friend among those your clients. Mm. You get me. That you're familiar with. That you know... Or maybe you're close to, you understand, right. that you can have such with, but it's not just not anybody. anybody. Because you should be on the safe path on what you're doing. Being a, a wrong scale does not mean, ah, I'm doing this thing because I want to die in it. Right. You get me. You're doing it maybe like temporarily, just for the meantime. Just to gather up something. Yes. I hear that a lot. I hear a lot of people say, <laughs> I'm doing this temporarily. But then, six years is quite a long time. Yes, and I have yeah. two kids. You didn't ask me about that. You have two kids. Yes, I'm taking care of. Aww. And and I'm happy to say it on her. My daughter just goes on a mission to Unilag. Oh, congratulations. So that six years, I was just using the money to nurture my children. So it's not as if maybe I wasted what the I saw. Money. So Speaking about, you know, you just mentioned that you have kids. Yes. Are these kids from Different. this lifestyle or no, no. an actual relationship? Yes. So you were in a relationship at she, some I point? I was married. Oh. Okay. I was married. But as time goes on, when I had my second daughter, the marriage broke up. Hmm. I had to go back to my mom's place, my dad's house. Getting back to my dad's house, I have to go for that course. Hmm. Let me start up something. Maybe I'll be doing something. So that was what led me to it. So while you were married, you were not into this lifestyle no, 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 at the time? No, 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 no. And then your kids, are they aware of this? No. They're so not. They're not. How do you manage to... Sneak out at yeah, night. Thank exactly. you. Exactly. <laughs> thank you. I'm from a little bit learned family. So I used to tell them, I go for this, uh, what they call it, they, let me say it in Yoruba, Oloko. Like I have friends cooking. that do cooking stuff. Yeah. So I used to tell them like, ah, because mostly I go out on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Mm. So I just said, ah, weekend, it's weekend do. I have work at Shagam. I have work at, you understand, right. just to have my way. You don't see them there and tell them you are going to club now. Right, right. So that's how. I mean, you've spoken about diseases and, you know, some clients saying, no, I don't want to use a condom. But I feel like diseases are just one thing that we should be worried, worried about in this about, lifestyle. Yeah. There's so many other things that can happen. You know, there are a lot of, like, ritualists. There are a lot of, like, you know, yeah, can, people that are just out to. They are, they are coming under the quest of um, these guys of, um, okay, you know, I just want to sleep with you. I want to have a good time. But really, they have other things. We see these things on social yes. media all the time where this Rape, person kills they, this they person. They can even steal yeah. from you. Stealing is even small. They kill. They so kill do you do you way. ever get worried about, you know, what if this happens? What if I happen to meet somebody that, you know, has very terrible plans? You know, do you worry about that at all? Yes. 
have you ever experienced anything, you know, scary while doing this? Yeah, I had one bad experience. Like about two two years ago, it was in Surulere. I went to a club in Surulere and I got to meet somebody that we went to his place. Getting to his place, you know this one thing is pay as you go empty and you don't you don't have sex and say later you pay. Mm. Before you have the sex, you have to pay. Mm. Because there might be confusion at the end of the day. Like, I don't, I don't even enjoy you. That Why am I paying you such right. money you get? So I was telling him, ah, give me the money. What, what we concluded on, give me. He said, ah, calm down. I want to go and pick my friend somewhere. When we are done, you get, we'll still go to, um, he said, um, we'll go to Maryland. He wants to go and meet his friend at Maryland, blah, blah, blah. And we are at something already. Mm. And why I allowed him was that he, he looks mature. Right. But he was harmful. When we had this stuff, we are okay. He now said we should drive down to uh, Maryland. We now enter this car. Getting to Maryland, he just said something. Maybe his tire burst or something. He came down. I was still in the car. So he was spending like. Maybe he spent like five minutes out. I just like, let me assist him. Let me just go down, check what was wrong with the car with him. Getting down, I swear, he ran inside the car and zoom off. Hmm. Yeah, he ran in and zoom off. Wow. Just but because he didn't want to pay? He didn't want to pay. And hmm. he took me from Surulere to Maryland at about 3 a.m. 3 a.m. Yes. So how did you get out of that situation? It was, it, luckily for me, it was um close to that um custom, I guess that custom office along that Maryland road. So those customs were going out on parade, I guess, because they are much on the e-locks. So they just saw me. I was like, because I was trying to stone and stop the car while he drove off. I'm like, Madam, what's that? What are you doing here at, at this time? I said, ah. I was so shy to explain myself, but I just said it's one chance that dropped me. They're like, I want chance, I ran three. Yeah, I just said, God, please, if you can help me out from here, help me. So that's how they now help me out to the main Maryland bus stop. I just find my way from there. Did you ever hear back from him again after then? I don't have Never. his number. Oh. I, I met him first For that the first day. Time. I don't have his number. So you've never experienced any like ritualist or anybody that's know. tried to like kidnap, but do things like this happen in this lifestyle? Because we hear it about do, it a lot. It, it does. It does. Hmm. It does. It does. It does. It does. You mentioned that um, you normally have conversations with them like, oh, this is how much you're going to pay before you start. And then they pay before you people start. But what's the, how, how is this pricing done? Is it per round? Is it, or is it just you look at the person and you just size them up, or no, you have a fixed price for yes. this? Yes, it's not per round. Because it's, it's just like this. Maybe you, a guy comes to a club, walk, that, walk, out, uh, walk up to a girl like, ah, babe, can I have you for the night? When she call her price, some it's not for the round. Each round, if you're talking about the one for each, each round, should be those ones living in hotel. Mm. They were all those roadside hotels, those ones. But this one is like they are paying for your service. So you, it's you based on here. negotiation. Yes. So the round they are going for. It doesn't count. What's the average the price? Okay. No, the average price for this. Like, say I'm a customer, say I'm a client mm -hmm. now. <laughs> What's the average price for like a night? Average like 30K. 30,000. Mm. Hmm. Do you know why this baffles me? Because in this economy of today, 30,000 can do almost nothing. Nothing, yes. So does it not make you feel like you are doing this for nothing? nothing? At times, uh, you weep at night like that now. <laughs> Even when you're outside, you weep like, God, am I the only one on earth? Why would I be passing through such? Yes. Yes. That's why I said I'm not 
my my is just to take care of my kids so because they are girls, so they won't live a wayward life. Right. It's just to put them because I'm not with their dad. It's not as if maybe I want to build house with it. I want to buy a car with it or something. It's just like just to daily, get hand out. Yeah. Instead of I'm that. not trying to like find. I'm sure that you must have thought of other possible options, but. Wouldn't it be smarter to have, like you said, you have some clients that, you know, over, they've already turned into your friend. Yes. Like, you know, you people have like a good relationship yes. going on. Why can't you build a type of, because I know that there are different types of hookup, right? There are people that have like long-term customers that, you know, they just stick to those particular That's customers. So isn't that safer than, you know, going out at and meeting night. new people yes. yeah, every time? That's, so why that's, haven't why you, we, that, that's why I love to make friends. That's why, because, you know, you can't, there's no, no, no child is, is foolish or, or dumb these days. You can't tell them this week you are going for cooking, next week too, yeah, you understand. Right. This That's respect. why you make, I make friends, so at least if I'm in need of anything during the week, I might just call down my friend like, ha, huh, what's up, what's happening, where are you, you understand, I won't be going to the club. Hmm. I'll be going from the house to go and see that my friend. And I'll go back home. Right. How do you take care of diseases? You've never experienced anything like because that's there are people that have sex one time and they catch like a terminal disease. There are people that do these things for years. Have wait. you ever had any experience with like maybe a scary experience with like a disease or no, something? No. You've never. Just normal infection, like um, toilet disease and the rest of it. I've never experienced a chronic stuff. So for you now, if your kids, when your kids are finally done with school, would you say that, you know what, mm. I'm done with this lifestyle? I put my hands down. You're very Even sure. For, for her to be in Unilag now, I put my hands down. I guess I tried. You have tried. I I've guess tried. I've tried for her because... She has other things that she does too that can help in, 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 in training her in school and our sister. So I assist too. Yes, I'm doing. You mentioned that you have two daughters. If one day, God forbid, you find out that one of your daughters is into this, how would you respond to that? Um, actually, what you just said now, I would say the way you train your children matter most. Hmm. The upbringing you give your children matter most. A child's lifestyle or future depends on the mom. How the mom wants the life to be. That's how the child's life is going to be. Let me tell you, I wear nose ring, I pierce my hair, my children don't do that and I, and I would never allow it. Hmm. She, you get. Right. So you feel like you, you've raised them well enough that they will yes, never... Yes, I, I, I used to call them and tell them something. I'm your mother. You, you're not the one looking for what I will eat now. I'm the one looking for what you guys are going to eat. And don't look at the way I'm, I'm searching for the, for the food or the way I bring the food on the table. Don't look at it. As a mother, I have to go out as a to bring that food. Right. The way I bring the food does not matter. It's just me satisfying you and giving you that food at the right time. Right. That's what you should be after. Hmm. Okay, so you mentioned that up upbringing is very important. It's very, right? very important. I agree with you. I agree with you to an extent, but you also grew up with your mom, I'm sure. Yeah. Would you say that your upbringing contributed to the lifestyle that you have right now? Yes, I will say that because I'm a mother now. So you don't and think that... I knew that... if my mom had stopped me in some... I would have cautioned myself, like, listen. If I wouldn't listen to anybody, I would listen to my to mom. mom. So but you feel she like was, she did Yeah, I was doing it. She, she, didn't st she was supposed... Like me, now, I don't think my daughter can take a step. I said, I have a, I have a grown-up daughter. She can't sleep outside. Mm -hmm. I dare her if she's watching me now. She can't. She will be in serious soup. They are to it. <laughs> because I saw those steps that was taken, that let's assume my mom was as, as ash as I am, I would have been better. 
But she was like, Kini Mashi. She saw La Bulolo. Ah. But do you believe that there are people that come from very strict households? Yes, that's the spoiled. Yes, straight away. Mm-hmm. So the best is that my strictness. I'm telling you that I pierced my ear, I pierced this, I pierced that. But my children did going to church, mm. being closer to God. I might be on the streets. I used to tell my mom that stuff too. That is not until I tie my scarf to cover my ear. I know my. You have a relationship yeah, with, God. with God. Speaking about that, I'm actually happy that you brought this up because I was just going to ask about your faith. Because there are a lot of people that, you know, judge people that are into this lifestyle. They feel like, uh, you yeah, know, uh, yes, it's let's castigate this person. You know, you're going to hell, you know. So you mentioning now that you have a good relationship with God, you yes. go to church. Isn't that a bit conflicting with the lifestyle that you live? How are you God able to... Understand. I w- I, there is no help. Do you know, help is when, you, okay, you need a job. Somebody offer you a job. That's help. No help, no form of anything. And my children are supposed to be going to school. Are supposed to be living their normal life. Because my, my life is somehow, I will now have to stop my children too. Hmm. No. But what I did was, God, I want to go into this. So. But these children, I'm delegating them to you. This thing I'm going to do is not my will. Help me. And, I, and since when I've been doing it, it's not, it's not as if maybe somebody is... I've been, yes, I've been meeting friends. Friends, friends. I have friends of two years, three years that I met from such. That they are my good friend. I can call them like, please come and assist me. I, I want to do this for my daughter. I want to do this for this. And they will turn up without seeing me. So it has been God all through. It has been God. All right. We're still on the topic of the realities of the Ron's girl living in Nigeria. We're going to go on a quick break, but we'll be back shortly. Welcome back, guys. We're still on the realities of a Ron's girl living in Nigeria. I was still seated with Bisola talking about our experience living this lifestyle. So there was something that came to mind while you were speaking. A lot of people are worried about, you know, ah, you know, you're meeting strangers. You don't know anybody's intention at the end of the day. And the people that feel they need to go the extra mile to fortify themselves, like maybe go to one Baba somewhere to just make sure that they protect them just for protection. Or some people even to maybe, uh, let me meet a man that, you know, who just marry me or take me out of this lifestyle. Have you ever thought about doing anything like this? No. Never. So you're not interested in any spiritual fortification, nothing like that. You already mentioned that you're a Christian, so you believe that God God is taking care of you in that yes. department. Okay, also I was going to ask about weird fetishes. I know that there are a lot of people that have very strange things that they like. Have you ever encountered any clients that will say, oh, maybe, you know, I want you to lick my feet or I want you to, anything strange at all. Or I want you to eat poop or I want, you know, all these things that we hear. Have you ever experienced anything like that? I've, I've experienced it before. Like a man, a matured man like that. Came, he came, he came around just we talked, we negotiate. And getting to the hotel, he was telling me that I should pull for him. You should what? I should pull. He wants pull, to pull like poop. Yeah. That he wants to eat it. I like ah ah. That is that your favorite meal or what? Oh What's that goodness. for? He said he loves me, that he likes me, that I should pull. You should poop. He wants to eat it. Ah, ah. Oh, wow. So did you do this? How would I do it? Definitely you should know you want to kill me now. <laughs> He's a ritualist. So how did you get yourself out, out of, of this the situation? Room. Yeah. Thank you. Because we've already removed our clothes, like smooching and having, you know, getting ready for the stuff. Like, ah, baby. It was actually wanted to touch my ass. Oh, I was like, ah, what was that? That I should, I should pee for him now that I can have a leak. 
that she just try and pull on his ah. Oh Lord Jesus. I was like, sir, I can't do this so. And he has paid me. Mm. I said, I can't do this, sir. Please can I go? Because I I cannot even sleep on the under the same roof with him. I don't know what he might do if I sleep off. He was begging me that he was going to hard to the money. They just that he likes me to the extent he wants to have a taste. So when I told him that I could not do that, that I want to be going that night. It was like, what was even night? It was already like 1 a.m. or 1.30. That I want to be going. He said I should return this more. I should refund the money. Mm-hmm. And I just jelly refund the money and find my way. And this so man is a Nigerian man? Or is a he... black, well, Yoruba black monkey man, like this black man. Black man, Yoruba man. Wow. That when he comes out at night, people used to hail him. He dashes money here and there. And so at times, those who aunties that have been on the streets before us, they will even be luring you to follow him. That he's a good man, or he's a this, he's a that. Too. Since then, I used to see him, but suddenly I've not, I've not, I've not been seeing him again. Oh, wow. Ah, these streets, a lot of things <sighs> Okay. I was also going to ask about this. You know, a lot of people say, oh, girls are into runs, girls are into runs. But I think it's a bit hypocritical because there are people that must be patronizing them for them to still be into it, right? But a lot of people believe that it is just men that patronize mm-hmm. runs girls. Do you... Do you ever encounter female clients, like women that are into lesbianism and yes. they want to? Have you ever experienced that before? Yes. Is that something that you engage in also? They are friends now. They are friends? What does that mean? I said they are friends. Is that something that you do? No. You don't? I don't. But, do but there are people like, there yes, are women like that. Are, yeah, you just make them your friend. You wouldn't run away from them. Oh. Yes, you will not run away from them. You make them your friend too. They're also but you won't involve yourself in such that. art because they're jealous more than the men. Really? Yes. So you won't involve yourself. You just play along. There are also some married couples that want to spice up their marriage. Just feel like, oh, they need a third party. Mm-hmm. Do, you, do you encounter things like that on the streets too? Yes. Do those ones typically pay more than the average, the normal guy? People that want, like, yes, all those extras. They, they need everything private. You mm. get. They, 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 are, they, they are going to be the ones to secure the, the apartment or hotel. So they want everything safe. Do you get? So they will pay you more. They will satisfy you, make you happy, please you. So there won't be issues. If you do this as a job, do you enjoy the actual sexual activity? Do you enjoy the sex? Or it's just like a, let me just do what I have to do. That's it. And collect the money. Does, does sex feel fun to you, like outside the job now? Have you ever had like an actual relationship where you feel like I'm in love with this guy? Yes. Have you had that while, yes. while in this lifestyle? Yes. And is he aware, of the li- is he aware that you're into the lifestyle? Are you are you in a relationship currently? Yes. You are. Is he aware of the lifestyle? Actually, I just met him. So. He's not aware yet. Yeah, but he's aware somehow. The street girl is somehow a street girl, until she quits. Right. Yes. Okay. So, do you feel like at any point this might affect your relationship with this guy, or? You just, uh, you if just it affects, don't it's not it's not made for me if it affects. Because I believe when you love somebody, you love them with their ups and downs. Hmm. So if it affects the relationship, the relationship the relationship is not for me. So hmm. let it <laughs> What if he says, Bisola, I don't want you to do this anymore. I'm ready to take care of you. I'm ready anything you need. Yeah, I'm ready better. to provide it. Would you would you be willing to uh, I would love that. I love that. <sighs> if there is anybody, I have one last question. Now you have come out and you're on TV, you know, there are a lot of people that will be watching you. You'll probably be on social media too. Are you worried about how this might affect your daughter? 
because you have a grown up child now. She's in school, you know. Maybe her friends bullying her. Oh, is that not your mom? Or maybe just she herself thinking, you know, my mom doing. I is this is this a source of concern to you at all? Mm, as a mother, I'm concerned about that. But I know if she's watching me. I just want her to know that man. I'm a very strong hero. If they bully her at school, let her tell them that my mom did all that so that I will not be wayward. Our mates are on our around my area, pregnant. Some are not going to school. Some are drop out that are even staying with their mom and dad. Hmm. So if they bully her, let her bully them back. That my mommy did all that all because of me. I did it for them because I don't want them to be wayward. I don't want them to be a spoiled child. I want them to have the best life that I never had. That was why I did all that. I can as well sit down at home and start pushing out to G boys or Yahoo boys here and there. You're going to meet a small girl. Or, or maybe use her to break a relationship or a marriage. Hmm. Or because maybe the guy has money, whatever. Even fortify her so that she will be there. But I didn't do that. I sacrificed myself, my body. Uh, no. <laughs> no. I understand this. I don't even want to go too deep into this because I'm sure that it must. I'm sure that you're not happy about it yourself. So yes. I don't want to go uh, deep into it. I understand, and I understand the mother's love. I understand a woman wanting to do anything possible for their child. So there's no judgment passed. I hope you don't feel judged. And, you know, yeah, I hope that help comes your way. Amen. Thank and you. then the father of your kids, is he aware that you're currently into this lifestyle right now? And if he's he not wasn't... taking care of them, so he, he don't, I don't think he... he, he, he you don't care, care about his opinion. So... Are you worried that he might come across this interview and maybe want I'm to take worried. his kids away from you? I'm or? not worried. I'm not. Okay. If there's anybody watching you right now that is trying to get into this lifestyle, is there any advice that you have for them? <laughs> the advice I have for them is, if there's any other thing that you can do, please do it. Please do what? Do it. That's what I'm saying on here. That that's why I never wanted my children to be wayward. I, ne I don't want them. Because I've been into it. I know what it is. Mm. So I don't mind sacrificing myself, my life for them, just to live well. Right. So my advice for the young ones, if you are going to school, face your studies. If you are learning work, keep it up. Whatsoever you are doing, please keep it up. But streets, girl, hook up, nothing. They will, it's either they end up using you, and if they're not using you, it's the street life will tarnish your image. Mm. As in, it's because I had children before I, you know, I might just, let's assume I started from my young age, I might just be at my age and I won't have any, I won't be, I won't even have a two year old girl or boy. Mm. Just because I had those kids before. That's why I have them as my kid. If you see any young girl on the street, before they, you wouldn't even have time to marry. So my advice for you young ones, face whatsoever good thing you're doing, and God will bless it for you guys. Amen. Out there. And then I have one last question before we wrap up. There are people that say that not everybody that is into this lifestyle is into the lifestyle for survival. There are people that are into the lifestyle because... They just enjoy promiscuity. They just enjoy sleeping around. Are there people like that on the street? Or is it that everybody that you've encountered, they just need help? There are people like that, oh, that you even see on the street, that you, being a street girl, you feel maybe they are better Thank than you. you. Like, And even being, being on the street, you see them, they have serious relationship. Oh, I'm telling you. When they come out at night, their boyfriend will be driving and be looking here and there. For them, a good guy. Then you, me now, sitting on my own, like, ah, why is this girl doing like this now? 
If I even have somebody like this guy, what am I looking for? So it's like that. You're right, it's like that. Some girls just do it because they want to every day. Thank you so much, Bisola. Thank you. You're very brave because it's not easy at all to put your face out there and share your story. But I, I love that you're doing this because, you know, there are a lot of people that might have wanted to get into this, but they would watch this interview and just, you know, listen to the advice that you've given yes. to them. Or the people that are currently even into it and they're just like, you know what, I don't want this to be my story. I don't want to continue with this. So I really applaud you for being able to put your face out there to say this. And I hope that you get help. I hope that one day you are able to look back and, you know, just thank God because you now live a completely different lifestyle yeah. and you no longer have to do this. I hope so for you and I pray so for you in Jesus' name. Thank you, amen. All right. So, guys, we've come to the end of this episode. I hope that you've learned one thing or the other. I hope that you're not passing any judgments because... We don't know anybody's story. We don't know why people do things that they do. It's not good for us to just look at people and just judge. So on that note, we're closing tonight's episode. And I will see you same time next week. Goodbye. <laughs>